Now we're going to do something slightly more challenging. The concept is the same. We have an area defined by three equations. The equation x squared plus y squared equals 1, which would be a circle. We're only going to take a quarter of that circle because the other two equations are the x-axis and the y-axis, which then define the area right here, which we're going to rotate. So this is our x-axis right here. This is our y-axis. Now when we take this area right here and we rotate it about the line x equals 2, we end up something like this. It's kind of like a, a section of a donut, but of course a donut would have a complete circle and would go all the way around like this. But what we're doing here is we're only going to go halfway, 180 degrees, so a half rotation, and we're only going to take a quarter of the shape of the donut, and we're trying to find the volume of that. How do we do that? Well, again, it all comes down to find the correct dv, the correct slice that we can start integrating upon. So, if we slice it like this, how about if we do this here? We're going to slice it in this direction. Uh, that would be a good way to slice it because you can see that the inner radius, the radius from the, from the slice, because it would be like a, a half a washer, with the inner radius would be from there to the line x squared plus y squared equals 1, and the outer radius would be to the line y equals 0, the, the y-axis, or I should say x equals 0, the y-axis. So let me draw the, the washer. So here's my washer, and it's going to be a half. There we go. So there's my half washer. And notice that the inner radius from there to there, this would be R1, and my outer radius from there to there would be R2. And so here you have my inner radius, which would be R1, and my outer radius, that would be R2. Okay, what is the volume of that half washer? The volume, dV, would be equal to the area of the washer, that would be uh, that would be the area times the thickness. Now the thickness here would be in the y direction. That would be small little dy. So it's the surface area times dy. And the surface area is defined by the area of the whole disk minus the area of the hole. So it would be equal to uh, pi times r2 squared minus uh, pi times r1 squared. Now since we're only doing half of it, we of course have to also multiply the times one half, like so. And uh, so that would be the whole disk minus the whole times the thickness dy. And then we're, going to then we're going to substitute into r1 and r2 what r1 and r2 are equal to in terms of x and y's. Now r1, actually r2 is the easiest one. r2 will go from this point to that point, which is exactly 2. So that's easy. And r1 would be equal to the full distance uh, 2 minus this distance, which would be the x distance from there to the... Uh, to the equation x squared plus y squared uh, equals 1. So we can factor out a pi, so we can say that dv is equal to pi over 2 times, remember r2 was the full distance, which is 2, so it would be 2 squared minus r1 would be 2 minus x. So 2 minus x quantity squared times dy. All right, we're almost there because now we have an x and a dy. We, of course, want the same variable there. So instead of x, we want to write something in terms of y. So we go back to this equation right here. We can say that x squared plus y squared equals 1. So therefore, x squared equals 1 minus y squared, or x equals the square root of 1 minus y squared. So instead of writing x, we can write 1 minus, uh, this 1 minus y squared. So this can be written, dv can be written as pi over 2 times 4 minus the quantity 2 minus, and that will become the square root of 1 minus y squared quantity so squared. So have this and a dy. All right, let's simplify that now and see what we end up with. So dv is equal to pi over 2 times 4 minus, we're going to square this, so that would be 2 squared is 4, but the minus would be minus 4. And then the product of those two would be minus 2 times the square root of 1 minus y squared. Of course, with this minus, that makes that a plus. And finally, this quantity squared, that would be plus uh, 1 minus y squared. The square root of that squared, so the square root disappears. But the plus will then be exchanged with the minus because of that, times dy. So I actually did two steps all at once, which is a dangerous thing to do. I squared this and I applied the minus sign all at once. So this gives me 4 
with a minus minus 4. The product of those 2 times 2, that would be 2 times a minus the square root of 1 minus y squared times 2 would be 4 times that. Ooh, I'm glad I checked because I think I just made a mistake. This should be 4 times because it's twice the product of those two, so twice the product of the two would be four times that. I get a negative times a negative, which gives me a plus. And then finally, this quantity squared with the minus, that would make it a square, uh, would make it a plus, but with this minus makes it a minus again. And I have to be careful. I need to put some parentheses around that. Oh, that's what I get from skipping steps. Bad thing. Because when I square this, I get one minus y squared. That would be a positive. But then with the minus in front of it, that makes that a minus again. The minus has to apply to both, like that. All right, I have one more negative to get rid of. And so I can combine these. The 4 minus 4 is 0. So now I end up with dv is equal to pi over 2 times, uh, let's see here. This minus times this minus, that makes that a plus. That makes that a minus. So I can write this as y squared minus 1 plus 4 times the square root of 1 minus y squared quantity dy. All right, are we ready to integrate? Well, kind of and kind of not. If I now want to find the total volume, I simply have to integrate the dv. So my, my concept here is that the total volume of this structure will be equal to the integral of all the dvs. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a bunch of washers, add them all up. It gives me the total volume, which of course is the definition of integration. Notice that this will be easy to integrate, but what about that? One minus y squared, take the square root of that. I don't have a proper dy. I have a little problem there that I need to remedy. So I'm going to do this one step at a time. So here, this is equal to the integral uh, of, and I can take the pi over 2 outside the integral, of the quantity uh, y squared minus 1 times dy. And then I know how to integrate. And then I have plus, I could take the 4 outside the integral sign, that would be 2 pi times the integral of the quantity 1 minus, whoop, I got a little ahead of myself. 1 minus y squared to the 1 half power dy. So what I did was I took the 4, brought out here, made it 4 pi over 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2, so that's 2, two pi. And so I'm going to integrate 1 minus y squared to 1 half power dy separately from this, because this is easy to integrate, and that is not. Okay? I'm now going to go ahead and integrate the first part. Now, what are my limits of integration? I'm going to integrate from y equal 0 to y equals 1, because the radius is equal to 1, so that would be from 0 to 1, 0 to 1. So let me integrate this, and I'll get back to this later. All right. So v is going to be equal to, um, we get uh, pi over 2 times y cubed over 3 minus y evaluated from 0 to 1. Now notice when I plug in the lower limits, I get 0, so I don't have to worry about the lower limit, only the upper limit. And of course, that would be plus and I'll leave that alone, we'll get there later. So v is equal to pi over 2 times, that would be 1 over 3 minus 1, and so that would be minus 2 thirds, so v equals pi over 2 times minus 2 thirds, and the 2's would cancel out, so that would be equal to v is equal to minus pi over 3. Let me get out of your way so you can see what I just did. So I simply simplify that and end up with a negative portion. Of course, the, you know the volume is not going to be negative. This portion, of course, will be much bigger than minus pi over 3, which you'll get a total positive value for the, for the volume. But the question is, what is the second part of the integral? We'll get to that in just a moment. So, so far, this part is done. We got a minus pi over 3. Now, what about that part? How do we integrate that? Well, the best thing to do there is to do some sort of substitution. So what we're going to do here, substitute sine of theta for y and see if that works. So let y equal the sine of theta, which means that the square root of 1 minus y squared, so therefore the square root of 1 minus y squared, will become uh, the square root of 1 minus the sine square of theta. Ah, and that should ring a bell because 1 minus sine squared theta is equal to the cosine squared theta. So that's equal to the square root of the cosine square of theta, which is equal to the cosine of theta. All right, that looks a whole lot better to integrate than 1 minus the square root, uh, the square root of 1 minus y squared. But now we need a d theta. We have a dy there, so how do we relate that? Well, if y is equal to sine of theta, then we should be able to figure out what a 
d theta is from that. So from here we can say that dy d theta is equal to the derivative sine is the cosine of theta. So therefore dy can be written as, from here we can say that dy is equal to the cosine of theta d theta. So if we're not going to write this times this, we end up with cosine, because cosine is the replacement for this, and instead of dy, we have to write cosine of theta d theta. So now we can say that the square root of 1 minus y squared times dy can be written as the cosine square of theta um, d theta. So now I have another problem. I don't know how to integrate the cosine square of theta, so now I have to have another substitution. Or at least not a substitution as much as maybe a, a nice... Um, uh, what we call an identity, a trig identity to get rid of that. And so we say, oh, I know what that is. That is equal to one half times one plus the cosine of two theta. And I still have the d theta there. Now that's much better because I'm able to integrate this. That's not a bad integral to integrate. Don't forget you still have the four and you still have the pi over two. So that gives me two pi times one half. So now let's go back over here. So instead of writing two pi times this, I'm going to write plus, and let me use a different color so you can see uh, how that's related. Okay, so instead of writing this times this, which is what I have over here, I'm going to write this instead. So that is equal to 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 half times the quantity 1 plus the cosine of 2 theta d theta. I think I got that right. All right. Now notice the 1 half times 2 pi, that cancels out, and I'm simply left with a pi. So there we get pi, and I'm going to break this up into two integrals. Pi times the integral of d theta plus pi times the integral of the cosine of 2 theta, and I need a 2d theta here. So I'm going to write a 2d theta since I multiply this times 2, I have to divide by 2. All right. Now, what are the limits? The limits have to be theta limits, and we'll get there in just a moment. So I had these, of course, were y limits. So y equals, from y equals 0 to y equals 1. We have to convert that to theta limits, and we'll do that in just a moment. So this here will be equal to pi times theta. And now I have to have the theta limits. And if I integrate this, I end up with the integral of cosine of 2 theta as the sine of 2 theta. So we get plus pi over 2 times the sine of 2 theta. And again, I need my theta limits. So how do we figure out the theta limits? Whoa. All right. Next step. I need to find my limits. And so I can say, how do I, I go back to my uh, relationship here? Where do I go? OK, let's go back over here. Since y is equal to the sine of theta, y equals the sine of theta, I can then say that theta is equal to the arc sine of y. So whatever number I plug in for y, I would get the corresponding theta. So that might help. So if y is equal to 0, so theta when y is equal to 0 is equal to the arc sine of 0. Well, what should be the angle to get 0 for sine? Well, that is 0. So therefore, when y is equal to 0, theta is equal to 0. Okay, that's my first limit. So my limit for theta would be from 0, from 0, to the upper limit. So now for, to get the upper limit, I plug in theta when y is equal to 1 is equal to the arc sine of 1. So what angle do I get when the sine is 1? That would be 90 degrees or pi over 2. So therefore I have theta equals pi over 2, which is the upper limit. And so we put the upper limit over there, pi over 2. So 0 to pi over 2, 0 to pi over 2. All right. So here, when I integrate that, and then I apply the limits, when I plug in a lower limit, I get 0. Plug in an upper limit, I get pi over 2. So pi times pi over 2 would be pi squared over 4. And over here, when I plug in the upper limit, what do I get? Well, when I plug in the upper limit for this, 2 times pi over 2 is pi. And the sine of pi is 0. And when I plug in the lower limit, the sine of 0 is also 0. So this simply drops out and doesn't contribute, so this is the only contributing factor. So what I have left is minus pi over 3 plus pi squared over 4. And make sure I have all the constants in here, so I end up with 2 pi over here, the 2's cancel out, 
and I ended up with a half, that would be pi over 2, and when I plug in the upper limit, I get pi over 2, and let's see here, am I missing something? I thought I was missing something. Oh, that's this pi over 2 here, pi, oh, I'm good, good, this is okay, and so this is equal to uh, pi squared over 4 minus pi over 3, and so this is equal to pi times pi over 4 minus 1 over 3. Well, it doesn't matter how we write it. This is basically the correct answer for the volume, and that's how we do that.